And we would like to start with uh, a moment of silence. Uh, this is in honor of those men and women who could not be with us today. Thank you. The police department and fire department honor guard will perform the raising of the colors followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilmember Pam Bell and invocation provided by Pastor Travis Burdett. I apologize, everybody, if you could please stand. Let us pray. God of creation, we give you thanks for this day. We honor and remember the hundreds of thousands of people who chose to serve, who chose danger so, may, so we may know peace, who chose struggle so we may know ease. We pray for those who still struggle from wounds and the pain of their service, both the wounds physical and mental. We pray for your presence and hope in their lives. Today I pray for those veterans that are present with us, that they would feel honor and peace this day. God, we give you thanks that are all that are here. We give you thanks for this time of ceremony and remembrance. We give you thanks in your loving spirit, O God. And so may we all say this together. Amen. Will you repeat after me, William, with me? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am now pleased to present to you Mark Lair, who will be singing our national anthem. Please join me in the anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the
You can be seated. Thank you. Good morning again, and, and welcome to the 2022 Veterans Day Ceremony. Thank you for being here. Uh, on behalf of all the residents of the city of Rowlett, at this time, if all of our local veterans present and all of our brave citizens presently serving in the military, would you please stand up so that we can honor you today? Thank you very much. Uh, I extend our sincerest gratitude for your service and um, the actions that you took and continue to do to protect our way of life and keep our country strong and safe today. Uh, now Mark Lair is going to come up and sing My Country, Tis of Thee, and we ask you to join with us. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside let freedom ring. My native country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills. My heart will rapture fills like that above. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees sweet freedom's song. Let mortal tongues awake, let all that breathe partake let rocks their silence break, the sound peals long. Our Father God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee I sing. My country, tis of thee, Sweet land of liberty, for all eternity, let freedom ring. I have to adjust this for my shortness. I'm Deborah Schinder, the Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, and I am very honored to be able to present this proclamation of Veterans Day ceremony today. Back in the dinosaur days when I graduated from high school, um, it was not usual for women to go into the military. My daughter, however, yes, please sit down. <laughs> My daughter, however, went into uh, the Navy right after high school. And it changed her, changed her life. It brought her out of her shell. It made her a more confident person. Um, she stayed in for 20 years and retired with her 20 years of service. So I'm a very proud Navy mom, and I'm very proud of all of my friends and relatives and all the citizens of this city who've served in any branch of the military. Whereas the freedoms we enjoy as Americans have been purchased and maintained at a high price throughout our history, and whereas our community has been built with the help of Rowlett's veterans who served their country during peace and war and kept our democracy saved, and whereas Rowlett's veterans, having served in the United States Air Force, United States Army, United States Coast Guard, United States Marine Corps, and United States Navy during the various wars and conflicts, and whereas today Rowlett's veterans serve as representatives of the thousands of courageous men and women who went on dangerous missions in defense of our freedom and those men and women who followed in their footsteps. 
And whereas throughout their careers, they've served our country and community and earned the respect of civic leaders and the affection of residents, joining the ranks of distinguished citizens of our community. Now, therefore, I, Deborah Schinder, on behalf of Blake Margolis, the mayor of the city of Rowlett, and our entire city council, do hereby extend to Rowlett's veterans our deepest appreciation for their meritorious service and call upon all the citizens to join me in recognizing Rowlett's veterans. Thank you so much for your service. And that applause is not for me. That applause is for you, the veterans. I would now like to welcome this year's keynote speaker, Tanya Oxendine. And I read over her biography. It's a long one, so I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it's really impressive. Many warriors tend to bottle up their emotions and think that they can handle their mental health challenges on their own. That tendency is even stronger within the military leadership community. The higher you rise, the more difficult it becomes to show any kind of weakness. But as Tanya Oxendine has learned, true strength is asking for help when you need it. After a stellar almost 30-year career in the United States Army, she needed help processing everything she'd seen and experienced. With Wounded Warriors Project and others by her side, she's gone from being a shut-in to traveling the world as an outspoken advocate for veterans' mental health, physical fitness, and survivors of sexual assault. Please help me welcome a warrior who has dedicated her post-military life to helping other veterans get the support they need, Tanya Oxendine. Now I'll put it back to my height. <laughs> good morning. I, let me, I'm going to say good morning right here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. And I'm going to say good morning over here. Can you hear me? Yes. My voice better doggone ex no. All right. So I'm um, going to talk about being something more than mediocre. Now when I heard that I was going to be talking to uh, the community of Rolette, Y'all, I said roulette, right? <laughs> and I had to make sure that's the right pronunciation. Evidently, it is not. I got a little southern twang myself. I'm from Florida. so But it's Rowlett. Uh, is that correct? Yes. yes. So when I got the, you know, the information I was going to be talking to the community in Rowlett, I said, good, because I'm leaving one hot state, I get to go to another hot state in Texas. <laughs> But Mother Nature had a different idea, right? Same thing, I'm from Tampa, Florida, so Nicole just uh, kind of went through and my family, everything is okay, but I had to put my little jacket on. Hope y'all like my little fringe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> had to put a little jacket on this morning because it was a little chilly. But since I'm an Army veteran, we train in the rain and we don't fall in the cold. We got to continue the mission. Now some of my Army people should have said, you know, my veteran is cool. No? Okay. All right. <laughs> tough proud, tough proud. <laughs> so anyway, I, I had spoken to Pam, um, and I hear that she's out on maternity leave. She's giving birth to a beautiful baby boy. Uh, so, and you know, Pam was explaining to me everything about the program today, this morning, and also, you know, just uh, telling me about the resource center and the outreach center that does so much for the veterans and families of this community. And that is something more than the GEO. So I want to kind of stick to the topic of being something more than mediocre. 18 Marines were on a routine air patrol flying uh, in a helicopter. And the helicopter's flying, doing the routine air patrol, and it stopped, and it's hovering. And when a helicopter's hovering, it's making that whoosh, 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 whoosh sound, right? So it's hovering, and as it begins to take off, it has a sudden descent, and a loud bang, and it crashes into 600 feet of water off the coast of Somalia. Now, I was not there. I've heard the story, and I've read about it. I can imagine how those Marines reacted. I can imagine that those Marines, their training kicked in, all of their battle drills kicked in, because they had to take care of each other, and they had to save lives. That is something more than mediocre. Four Marines lost their lives that day. 
14 were injured. One of those injured Marines, his name is John Malia. I have not met John as of today. After John recovered from his injuries from that crash off the coast of Somalia, and after he did his time in the, in the serving in the Marines, he decided that he wanted to continue to be something more than mediocre. He wanted to help the veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan when they came home. So John and a few of his buddies, a couple of guys, got together and they took about three backpacks filled with some toiletries, some shirts, and socks, and things of that nature. They took those backpacks to Walter Reed Hospital. And they passed them out to the injured soldiers there. They only had a handful of them, about three or five, three or four or five backpacks. <clears throat> because John knew that when you were taken off the battlefield, Nine times out of ten, your uniform is cut off you, and you leave with no belongings once you go to the hospital. A dear friend of mine, Danielle, when she was growing up, she had two things that she wanted to do. She wanted to attend Notre Dame, and she did. She attended Notre Dame on a full-ride basketball scholarship. Now, Danielle was left-hand dominant, and she was one of the best left-hand basketball players, uh, guards, at Notre Dame. The second thing Danielle wanted to do was join the military, and she did. She joined the Army. And in 2004, Danielle was deployed to Iraq, and a rocket-propelled enemy grenade hit Danielle, and she lost her left arm. Danielle is thriving now. However, Danielle was also a recipient of one of those backpacks. In the backpack, it had the toiletries and you know, some socks and shirts and underwear. Now, remember I said that John Malia and his guy friends, right? So the backpack was filled with all male items, <laughs> right? And that was back in 2003 time frame. And um, Danielle didn't care. She got those boxes that was two sizes too big and she put them on. She got those little tight whities that was two sizes too small and she put them on. Because she was glad to have something to call her own at that point. She was tired of wearing that hospital gown that was flapping in the wind and that was right. <laughs> at that point, she didn't care who drawers she had on. She was just a happy, was happy to have something. Now, if we back up a little bit to 2003, when John Malia had first taken those backpacks, him and his friends, to Walter Reed Hospital, the next day a nurse called and said, we need 200 more backpacks. Yeah, that's how Wounded Warrior Project was founded. John Malia was something more than mediocre. So I with three backpacks. And Wounded Warrior Project is now doing wonderful things for, for our warriors. Um, so I would like to say that uh, you know, John and his buddies, those guys did something better to make somebody's life, to make veterans' lives better. They made my life better. Um, because I'm so doggone retired right now. 30 years, I'm retired, chilling. I live a wonderful life. Like I said, I get to live in sunny Tampa, Florida. I have two adult sons. My oldest is 35. My youngest is 30. Uh, I have a slew of nieces and nephews. I have a 12-year-old granddaughter. And my brother just recently moved in with me, temporarily. He can't stay for long. You know, they say by company, three days like they like fish. After a while, they got to go, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so he moved in with me. Um, and he adores his eight-year-old little niece. Yeah, you heard me right. 35, 30, and an eight-year-old little girl. Another thing about my eight-year-old little girl is she has blonde hair, and she has golden-colored eyes, and she's my little ever little doggy. <laughs> <laughs> and I love her. Her name is Cookie. Um, you know, and like I said, I live a wonderful life now, but it wasn't always like this. Um, I was smiling on the outside and suffering on the inside. I served a stellar 30 years in the Army. I achieved the highest enlisted rank uh, for my field. I was a drill sergeant. That's why I don't need that mic. <laughs> I served in the 82nd Airborne Division as a Master Paratrooper, and yes, that means I jumped out of perfectly good airplanes, <laughs> 87 times, I might add. I um, served as a senior executive leader with the title of Command Sergeant Major, um, leading over 1,500 soldiers. Um, what? Right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and then after returning from Afghanistan, 
Afghanistan in 2012, I was assigned to the Pentagon. And I remember one day I was looking out the window, um, saying to myself, today is a beautiful day to go swimming. I mean, it was such a nice day in, in Virginia that day. And I said, you know, today is the day that I'm going to go take a swim. Now, mind you, I can't swim. But that was the day that I was going to take a swim. So I told my buddies, I said, hey guys, you know, I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I got some things I need to do. So I go down to the parking garage, I get my car, and I'm driving and I'm driving, and I'm saying to myself, today is the perfect day to go for a swim. It's a beautiful day. And I kept saying to myself, but you can't swim. But I knew the day, that, to, that, that day was the day that I was going to drive my car off the bridge because I knew I could not swim. I no longer wanted to be here. But I found myself at the mental health, mental health count at Fort Belvoir, Virginia Hospital. <laughs> and they were able to help me, the team came together to help me to get the help that I needed. It was not enough because I was in bad shape. I was introduced to Wounded Warrior Project at that time. Wounded Warrior Project has over 17 free programs and services for veterans. The program and service that helped me the most was the mental health care. We have four hospitals that take care of veterans for about two to three weeks, all free, and you get all the mental health care and treatment that, that you need. I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and severe depression. And I'm thankful for the Wounded Warrior Project I'm thankful for the medical team at Fort Belvoir, for my sons for standing by me and sitting with me. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my military community, the Army of Woods, and my 82nd Airborne Division buddies. I'm thankful for them. <laughs> so it is because of what you Because of Wounded Warrior Project, and it's because of my team, the, the mental health team, my sons, and all that, that I was able to get the help that I needed. Now, during that drive, when I was going to drive off the bridge, I could only think about my, you know, I was in this, I don't know if you guys ever, like sometimes you think you're driving to the store, but you're driving home or buying your date or whatever. But I was in this dark place, and the entire time I'm thinking about my sons thinking about both my boys, because I love them so much. I love them down to their bone marrow, and I did not want to leave suicide as a legacy. And I'm glad that I drove to help and not to harm. I'm glad the Wounded Warrior Project was there for me. And now I get to, um, you know, they've made such an impact on my life that I came out of retirement to go to work for them as a spokesperson, um, and travel the world, and, um, you know, advocate for veterans, for physical health and for mental health, because I want to continue, hopefully, to be something more than mediocre. Um. <laughs> you know, uh, about 200,000 veterans transition each year. And each one has a different experience or a different perspective. Because what may be smooth for one may be a roller coaster ride for another. And that's whether you did three years or 30 years. Now, today, being, you know, even though it's raining and a little brisky, it's still a beautiful day to be alive today and to be here with you all in Rowlett, Texas. Um, and, you know, we're here to celebrate our veterans for, and to honor them for pledging to protect us and protect our freedom and to protect this country. And so I want to talk about uh, value in this little envelope. I know I said envelope. I, I told y'all I'm from Florida. <laughs> People always come in. It's envelope, but I say envelope. Now I have two pieces of paper. One is the losing Powerball tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody like this? I didn't think so. <laughs> the next is a crisp. Brand new $100 bill. Who would like this? Ah, got some hands up. There we go. <clears throat> All right. If I crumbled it up, would you still want the $100 bill? Yeah. Absolutely. 
If I threw it on the ground and stepped all on it, would you still want the $100 bill? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the moral to this story is, life is going to give us, going to crumble us up. Life going to grind us up. And sometimes as veterans, you know, we transition, we feel like we have no value. It doesn't matter what I did to this $100 bill, it still has value. Mm -hmm. And so do you, ladies and gentlemen, who served our country. Don't you ever feel like you have lost your value. You will never lose your value. You have paved the way for us. You have paved the way for me. We have paved the way for the next generation. You have value. We honor you. I salute you because you are something more than mediocre. Life does not give us second chances, but it will give us a fresh start. A fresh start to be something more than we know. Thank you. Now, I'm going to go off script just a little bit. Why? Because I can. <laughs> I don't think there's any greater honor that we can give you as, as myself and as my fellow Marines other than to say, oorah! So, thank you, Tanya Oxidine, for helping us honor our veterans today by covering such a, an imperative topic such as mental health, as well as all those veterans who are coming back into civilian life. I am Council Member Mike Britton, and I would like to share with you some other ways each of you could express your appreciation to a veteran on Veterans Day. Please consider donating money and or time to an organization that supports our service members. Flying a flag, asking a veteran about their service, writing a note to a veteran, or visiting a VA hospital. I encourage you to extend your recognition to our servicemen and women in one or more of these ways. Additionally, we would like to thank the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center, VROC in Rowlett, who continues to help veterans in our communities and their families. Thank you again to all the men and women who have served and continue to serve. A special thank you to Tanya again, also to Pastor Travis Burdett, the Rowlett Police and Fire Department Honor Guard, and finally, thank you to the Rowlett Rotary Club for providing the flags for this event. I'd like to now extend uh, or invite uh, Council Member Jeff Winget for his words. Thank you, Council Member Britton. Before I give some closing remarks uh, this afternoon, or I guess we're still in morning time this morning, um, I'd like to just point out in the program that all of you have the list of City of Rowlett veteran employees that we have on the last page here. And I think that's so important because these are individuals who not only serve their country, but are also serving our community. And I appreciate every single one of these individuals just as I appreciate all the veterans that reside here in our community as well. So thank you to all of them and thank you to all of you. To our veterans, to the fallen, and to their families, thank you again for solidifying our freedom and for being leaders in our community. Thank you for taking the time to remember our heroes. May God bless you, your families, our troops, and may God bless America. I ask that we give it up one last time for Mr. Mark Layer, who will come up and perform the closing ceremony with the song, God Bless America. Thank you. You want to stand? Yeah, let's stand. Here we go. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, 
white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. That's the end of this program. Thank you. Appreciate you all.